The Lord's call is on your life and you should just give yourself permission to internalize that. And to be able to say, Lord, I just give you permission. I don't know what it means. I don't know where we're going. But I want to follow you. And I want, I want to give you my life. So all you have to do is each day, just begin your day with that. Lord, I give you my life. Lord, I want to follow you and I want to belong to you and I want to be yours. Okay, just watch the adventure. Buckle up and just watch the adventure of what happens. You know? So, um, a word about spiritual gifts. Now, we have been given spiritual gifts, and it's helpful to educate ourselves on it. So the book that I wrote, Welcome to Spiritual Gifts, is a good start. If you're not familiar with it, read that book. It'll teach you a lot. There's a lot in that little tiny book. Then there's opportunities to be, as Sherry Waddell been in the neighborhood here, and other people come to teach on spiritual gifts, and they have spiritual gifts inventories. That can help you. You can all go online. You can just answer these questionnaires about kind of who you're asking questions. It's a helpful way to kind of begin to understand and dial in what might be my spiritual gifts. But let me tell you one thing. I know this for sure. You know, Paul talks about the charisms also as manifestations of the Spirit in the moment. And when you're in, when you're ministering, when you're serving someone in love, and, and you're going to pray for them or whatever. It doesn't matter if you don't have, if you don't discern you have a gift for healing. If somebody needs prayer, pray for healing, right? If you don't think of yourself as being a prophet, maybe you don't have a strong prophetic gift. In the moment, as you're praying with somebody, ask the Lord for help, and the Lord will use you, and speak to you. In the moment, it's about. I mean, wherever you go, uh, this is really what I want, to, want you to see. Wherever you go, you're a child of God. Jesus said he always does what he sees the Father doing. So God might bring you into situations that you stumble into, or maybe someone who, let's say, a neighbor, a friend, who you're close to, and you end up having a conversation, and they're heartbroken because a child is going through a serious difficulty of some kind, and, or whatever it might be, or struggling in marriage, or whatever. And as a good friend, what you normally do, you listen to them, and maybe you might cry with them, maybe you just encourage them, just a loyal and good friend, and they're experiencing God's love for you. I want to encourage you as, as a way to, someone asked me, how do I begin to use my spiritual gifts? How do I begin to engage more, being open to the Holy Spirit? Start really simple, like in a situation like that, and to be able to say to somebody, after you've heard them out, and uh, you know, you've just been together, and it's coming close to the time to end the conversation, say, can I just share with you, you know, something that when I've been through stuff like this and difficulties and challenges, one of the things that's really, really helps me is when friends pray with me, you know, and uh, it's really touched my life. And I know, I know God loves you. I know He's here. You can say that to a total unbeliever, and seriously, they'll ninety-nine percent of the time will say, can, "Can I pray with you?" They'll say yes. Even people who don't believe in God will say yes. Not because you push them or something like that, but because they just want help. And so besides just giving good counsel, just take their hand if they'll let you and pray with them in the moment. And just, just say something simple. Like, you don't have to do anything. Just, just close your eyes and God is here and I'm going to pray a simple prayer for you. And whatever's on your heart, pray with them and watch what happens. What you're doing in that moment is their heart is being opened because they're hurting. And they're looking and crying out. And you go from good advice to allowing God to use you to be a conduit of his personal love and tenderness for this person. person. And just give the word a moment. Don't have to make a big deal out of it. And you might in that moment feel a prompting from the word, something from your heart to speak to that person. A word of encouragement, a word of love. And watch what the word does. Because what they need your shoulders of friend is important. Any advice you might have is important. But what they most need is to know the love of God. And to know that the Lord wants to use them. I want to end with just a story that I got hit the road. Um, a number of years ago, when Pope Francis wrote Evangelical Gaudium, he talks in it in a way that no Pope has ever talked in a document that I've ever seen, where he said that every one of us in the normal days, daily life, of being on the street, meeting people on the street, meeting on a bus, he said, meeting them here and there. You have opportunities to share Jesus with other people. And God might want to prompt you, so be ready. And he said, it's not that difficult, he said. It's not that hard. He's basically saying, trust God and 
Now it's easy for you to say, everybody wants to talk to you, right? Yes, the Pope. <laughs> but when I read it, I kind of got convicted. Because, you know, that's happened to me at various times in my life, but I had kind of been so busy with life, I just stopped thinking about it. It wasn't even on my radar. And so, um, later that week, a friend of mine called on a Friday, a beautiful September day, and he said, hey, Herbs, let's go out for a beer later this afternoon downtown. It's a Friday of a weekend, a game weekend in Michigan, so it's really fun. It's just a neat college town. So about 4 o'clock, well, we met, we picked him up, we went downtown, and we we're going to go to our favorite bar, an Irish pub uh, called Con O'Neill's. And we get in the streets are just filled with people walking down the street, and I'm and I'm walking. I'm just feeling great. All of a sudden, I felt this prompting. I was, I was being thankful to the Lord for a beautiful day. I was my buddy. I thought, listen, there's someone here I want you to talk to today. Just a simple prompting. And so I told my friend Mike, I said, Hey, boy, well, I think we're supposed to talk to somebody here today. From the Lord wants to connect us with somebody. And there's there's hundreds of people all over. He was like, Ooh, you know. I said, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm not going to worry about it. We're out for a beer. Let's start there, you know? And we went to Conor Neal's and it was full. We couldn't get in. It was a wait. So we went to another bar and that was full. We ended up in a place called Grizzly Peak, which is kind of a cool bar. I like it. And the only place we came in, we wanted to get a booth so we could talk and get caught up. And the only place there were seats was at the bar. And, and I said, what the heck? Let's just go to the bar. We're not going to find a seat. It's, it's game weekend. Let's forget it. So we sit down at the bar. There's three seats. We sit down together. There's an empty seat here and a guy next to me. And, and we just lined up. You know, I got one of those little taste tester things, you know, with four different little beers. It was exciting. But like, yeah, thank God it's Friday. And, uh, and so my friend's phone rings and it's his boss who's got to take the call. So I'm sitting there. I'm about to have a, a beer and I was looking at the beer in front of me and behind the bar. And also, I said, Lord, if this is you, I'd be happy to talk to anybody you want me to talk to. And, uh, and I'm about to take a drink, and I happen to turn. There's an empty seat, and there's a guy in a really nice suit, big guy, sitting there. He's about to take a drink, and he looks at me, and I look at him, and I find the Lord said, there he is. <laughs> and I'm like, you're making this up, and you know, all that kind of stuff. This isn't real, you know, and all that sort of thing. So I thought, okay, what the heck, let's, let's I'll try. I said, hi, how are you? He said, hi. I said, what are you doing? And he kind of looks at his glasses and having a drink. What are you doing? <laughs> I said, well, that's, this is a good start, you know. Great evangelist, right? It's like I'm you know, stepping all over my tongue. And, uh, and I said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. I'm having a beer as well, you know. And I said, uh, hey, what do you do for a living? And he said, I'm a lawyer. He said, well, I'm a kind of lawyer. He said, I'm a lawyer. He said, what I do now, I actually build a company. I'm going to take over distressed companies, you know, where there's conflict. Somebody comes, the court has to take more, somebody comes in on behalf of the court, they take the company and whatever they do with companies. You know? So I said, oh wow, that's kind of interesting. And I, and I said, um, um, you like your work? He goes, yeah, yeah, I'm really busy. I said, well, like how busy? Like how many hours a week would you say you work or how many hours a day? He kind of stops by, he goes, that's a good question. He thinks funny, he goes, I don't know, 16 hours a day average, something like that. I said, really? <laughs> and, and I said, it's kind of as I was surprised. And I said, gee, why would you do that? And he goes, that's an even better question. <laughs> and, and so I'm thinking, you know, waiting, and he's thinking, he goes, well, I guess, I guess the real reason is because there's so many people, he's got like 300 employees or something in his company, he's got a number of offices around the country. And he said, uh, I'm afraid to let people down who are counting on me. You know, a lot of people are counting on me. I said, wow, I get that, that pressure, that's a lot of pressure. He said, yeah, and I said, did you ever feel like you're on this treadmill that you can't get off and you'd love to get off and just release some of that pressure? He goes, yeah. And so I'm sitting there thinking, okay, you got yourself in this far. You can back out now. <laughs> you can back out now or you can help this guy maybe, you know, who's under stress and needs to know the Lord. And, and so I'm thinking, I better have another beer real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Mike stole the phone. I'm like, okay. I said, you know, uh, this might sound strange, but I know somebody who can help you. He goes, like who? And I said, now, get ready for this. He said, this is even more strange. And I promise you, I've only had one beer, okay? And I said, Jesus Christ can help you. Uh, and now, here's, here's what I mean. I'm not, I'm not going to get on my soapbox. I just want you to know uh, that Jesus Christ is real. He knows you. He loves you. He can help you because I know he's helped me. He's helped other people dealing with the very kind of pressures and stress and fears of failure and stuff like that. He kind of goes, oh, wow, okay. And then uh, he says, how is he going to help? I said, well, we could pray. And he goes, right here? 
I said, yeah, why not? Why not? And to my great surprise, he goes, okay, just like that. So I'm thinking, oh, oh, oh now what? You know? <laughs> Seriously. And so there's his bar stool, I'm on a bar stool, there's an empty one in between us. And Mike's still on the phone, he can't help me. And so I turned, so why don't we turn? I said, I don't know why I said this to you guys. I said, you know, maybe I can just, you know, you can just relax and maybe I can just take your hands. And he goes, my hands? What do you mean? He goes, okay. And he's, he's a big guy, you know, and he grabs my hands. I remember he had a big old Rolex watch on and I'm looking at his watch. And wow, that's, that's And I said, just close your eyes and I'll just lead you to a little prayer. And I'm about to close my eyes and the woman who's bartending, is standing there holding two drinks, looking at us, holding hands together. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what? you know? And so, and so we started to pray, and I asked, you know, told him if he'd like, he could pray after me, so I just let him in a kind of simple prayer. And I opened my eyes, and I felt like a tsunami of love for this guy. And I said, I said, you know what, man? Jesus Christ loves you. He knows exactly the burdens you carry. Uh, it's no accident that we're here today. And all of a sudden, his chin starts shaking like this, and he gets kind of flush, you know? And a tear comes down his cheek. And I'm holding his hands, and at that point, all of a sudden, I feel something on my back, and it's rags. He's my guy, my buddy's got his hand on my back, and he's like right there, because he knows immediately what's going on, you know, he's in my parish. And we're standing there, sitting there praying, and all of a sudden, we just let it sit for a minute, you know? And the guy opens his eyes, and we're both looking at him. And he's like, honestly, what he's saying, he goes, who are you, God? <laughs> That's absolutely true. And I go, I go, hey, where's a bunch of Catholics out for a beer? A couple of Catholics out for a beer. He goes, you're Catholics? <laughs> I, go, I was a Catholic once, he said. I'm not anymore, though. You know? I said, wow. And I, 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 said, uh, I said, you know what? You know that God loves you? He goes, you know, I think so. I think so. And I said, hey man, I just, I just want to tell you, you know, about an hour ago or 40 minutes ago, we were walking down the street and I felt like God said there was someone I was supposed to talk to today. And I think you're that guy. You know? And he wants us to be a beginning of something. Here's what I encourage you to do. You're a former Catholic? I said, get a rosary. He goes, no kidding, dude. Listen to this. I think there's one somewhere in my trunk. <laughs> in my he said like that, you know. Somebody gave me one. And it's back there somewhere, you know? And I said, well, just get it and start praying each day and ask Mary to help you find the right thing. I said, you know? But, I, but then I knew we could just keep talking. So I, you know, I said, thank you so much. And he gave me his, his number. And, uh, and so I turned back and he goes, hey, I got to tell you something. That's what he goes. You know what? You know why I'm sitting here today? I said, no, why? I have no idea. He said, this is my, I went to school here, undergrad. I got my MBA here. I love this town. And this is my favorite bar. I have not been in this town for 10 years. I said, why? He said, because 10 years ago, I got off the road because my mom was at UVM Hospital and she, was, she had cancer. And I got one of these long-term hotel room kind of things and I was with her every day. And he said, and looked at a certain point, like she was getting a little better and I was with her at night, I was working during the day, I was hardly getting any sleep. And the nurse one day said to me, hey, there's a little uptick for your mom, get a good night's sleep tonight. So he gets a good night's sleep, and he gets a call at 4 o'clock in the morning telling him that his mom died. What did he say was the burden that he was carrying? I didn't want to let people down who were counting on me. He was a son who was full of guilt, and he let his mom down, and he wasn't there. He wanted to be there for her. He wrecked his life. He lost his marriage. All kinds of stuff happened. And he said, today I was in Jackson, Michigan, which is 30 miles west of Ann Arbor on Interstate 94, working with a distressed company. I was driving back, I'm heading to Berkeley, Michigan. Two Jewish brothers who had war in their business, the court took it over, I'm gonna be taking it over. And I'm driving by Ann Arbor, and I feel this pull to come in Ann Arbor. I said, no way, man, no, I'm not going. And he said, I got beyond State Street, beyond to the next exit, and I find myself turning off the exit, I'm circling, you know, back in the town, what are you doing? Where are you going? He said, I don't know, I don't know. And he said, I went to my favorite spot in all of Ann Arbor, Grizzly Peak Bar. And he's sitting there all by himself. How great is God? 
How much does God love each one of us? He had his number. And for a moment, because if I want to tell the Pope if I ever see him, thank you for convicting me, because I forgot to think that way. I forgot to anticipate it. I forgot, you know, normally I would have just been into me and my buddy, and that's it. But my heart was just singing, and I was slightly convicted. I said, Lord, if there's anybody, and boom, lo and behold, there was somebody. Look, I do this stuff for a living, and I didn't even know what to say in the moment, okay? It's normal. Don't be afraid. Just step into it. Step into it, and let your heart talk. Not your head, let your heart come. Let that love come. And the Holy Spirit will help you do what you need to do. And I tell you what, if we would have just talked, and I wouldn't have said, hey, could we pray for a minute? It never would have gone where it went. I had to just step out of the boat. I had to just let go and let God do something. And if you do that, He will manifest His presence, and He will help you. He'll speak to you. He'll prompt you. He'll encourage you. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. I got to go to the airport, but it's been great being with you guys. Thank you so much for, you, for your leadership, for the music ministry, for the whole team that's here. I wish I could stay with you longer, but the time I've to go home and my wife.